Please help me. I'm trying to escape. They're after me. Please. They're coming. Don't tell him. Don't tell him. Don't tell him. Don't tell him. Hello, hello, welcome back to Cozy Sundays. How are you all? I hope you are well. So I put the brightness up. My mic's there. Put the brightness up today. You can see me better. Got my headphones on. Hiding my lockdown here. Walking dead top. But I need to sort this out here like a bit bumpy, shiny. But don't worry, it's all good. Hope everyone's all right. So I've got no more merch today, couldn't find Alcatraz, but I have a new cup. It's kind of fitting because it kind of reminds me a bit gloomy, rainy and stuff, but it's Walking Dead. Walking Dead. Dow Dixon. Dow Dixon. And obviously if you're listening to me, audio, podcast, Spotify, blah, blah, you can't see it. So come on to YouTube, check me out see how it goes so we are talking Alcatraz the movie as well as the Alcatraz prison and what it is now and some people say it's haunted that's what we're talking about this time this time so I hope everyone's okay so but from that that's, that's about it and check out my other YouTube <laughs> videos so the prison, Alcatraz Prison, is located in San Francisco Bay and also is a good viewpoint from the Golden Great Gate Bridge. So if you ever do visit San Francisco, Golden Gate Bridge, good view. <clears throat> and also with the prison, did you know that the windows, all the windows are facing the city and the reason why is so the prisoners that's the only way they can look so it's like what they're missing it's it's a bit cruel but they are in prison and this is a high maximum prison so the worst of the worst go over here so like al capone was there um i think machine gun kelly was in there all, all sorts like that so it is um it's a beast mate but it's not now it isn't now. So now the prison was. Did I just know that? The prison was closed um, 21st of March 1963. So it's, I was born in 88. So the prison has gone. And now is like a, a tourist attraction, but we'll talk about that later. Oh, and also I've got an epic story, as I say. So, 1979, this is about the film, 1979, the film was released, um, the main character, is all, as you know, is the legend Clint Eastwood, or Clint Eastwood, who done all the cowboy films, Fistful of Dollars, he's amazing, he's still going now, he's directing now, I love that guy, uh, he played the leader escapee, Frank Morris, there is, well, there's a debate as well. I think in the movie there was four that's going to escape. Three of them escaped. Which was his friends from other prison, other prisons. And the fourth one didn't have time to escape. So he stayed in his cell. Or he couldn't get out. He couldn't, that was it. So he stayed in his cell and basically dobbed them in. You little dobber. But it's okay. So this film is a, um, a, a d adaptation of the 1963 non-fiction book of the same name by J. Campbell Bruce. And also 1962 Prison Escape from the Maximum Security Prison. Oh no, on Alcatraz Island. Yeah, that's this one. The film stars Clint Eastwood features Patrick McGuan, I think, Fred Ward... J. 
Jack and Larry Hankin and um, also Danny Clover appears in his film debut Escape from Alcatraz marks the fifth and final calibration between Seagal and Eastwood yeah I read up on this guy I've done it it's not Seagal as in um, like the actor but I think they've done kind of um, what do you call it um, kind of directed this together so they've done a few films together there's quite a few here like Two Mills and a Sister uh, Bluff there's quite a few uh, oh Dirty Harry 1971 so I do know that film but you ain't going to be Escape from Alcatraz Prison I'm going to watch it after this and hopefully you guys too it's just when it starts up oh guys it's like he comes on Clint Eastwood He's been arrested and he comes on the boat. The only way to get there is the boat. And it's so like stormy and raining and the, the just just the way he comes on, the kind of atmosphere if you like, just suits it really well. It's it's like middle of night and it's uh it's awesome. I love the way they do it. Just draw it just gets you straight in there. It's really good. And another fact as we're talking about the water so this is where there's a theory did they escape there's so many theories i've listened to many on podcasts is did they escape some people say yeah some people say no like never no chance some people say they drowned and died some people say they're still out there or died of age um apparently there's great white sharks it's very deep there and there's great white sharks surrounding it so that's another theory there I mean, maybe they didn't want to, shark didn't want to eat them, but. So this film was um, a budget of $8 million, right? And in the box office, it got $43 million. $43! I feel like I'm a bit away from the mic. Yeah, $43 million. That's insane. So, yeah, the film's final scene implied some hints that the escape was successful, like I just said. But in fact, it remains a mystery as to whether the escapees succeed or not. Circumstantial um, evidence uncovered in the early 2010s, that took a while, seemed to suggest that the uh, men had survived and that... Contrary to the official FBI report of the escapees, uh, the raft has never been recovered and no car thefts being reported. A raft was discovered on nearby Angel Island with footprints leading away, similar to the fictional scene in the movie. Yeah, I remember that right at the end. In a movie where the warden finds a uh, Christ the mum or whatever that is that was possibly left by the escapees I don't know what that word is it's long for me you know what I'm like dyslexic but I'll get there so yeah it's like some people say yeah they're saying about the FBI I personally think they did escape I mean come on if you're a prisoner in there and you want to go for all that trouble you want to get out you you would fight to the nail you wouldn't want to stay there so you would go, and go you shall. So you, because they're saying like the the weather, the water is so cold, that's why they built that float. So I I think they did, and I personally think they were still out there. Those uh, those other two, I think they were brothers. I'm not sure on that, but I'm sure they're out, living somewhere, some kind of Mexican place. Uh. Picking olives for a living. Who knows? So, there, a bit more information here. The character Charlie Butts was based on a fourth inmate, mm, Alan West, who did participate in the real escape, but was left behind, as I said, yeah, when he could not remove his ventilator grill on the night of the escape. He aided the FBI's official investigating of the escape, yeah. Unbelievable. Why? Why dob him in, man? Seriously. So the screenplay and filming of this. It's a little uh, little snippet here. This is not all of it. I'll just do a little bit. So 
Alchaz was closed shortly after the true events on which the film was based. Screenwriter uh, Richard Tuggle spent six months researching and writing a screenplay based on the 1963 non-fiction account by J. Campbell Bruce. He went to the Writers Guild and received a list of literary agents who would accept unsocializing um, manuscripts. So I don't know what that is. Manuscripts. He submitted a copy to each and also to anybody else in the business that he could conjole, I believe, into reading it. Everyone rejected it, saying it had poor dialogue, kind of like my reading, and characters. Lacked and love interest and that the public was not interested in prison stories. Tuggle decided to bypass producers and ex experts and deal directly with filmmakers. He called the agent uh, for director Don Segal, that's what I was saying about earlier, and lied saying he had met Segal at a party and the director had expressed interest in reading his script. Fake it you make it mate. The agent forwarded the script to Segal who read it, liked it and passed it on to Clint Eastwood. That is amazing. I love that stuff. Fake it till you make it, man. That's way good. Oh, just went right up there. Um, yeah, that that is is what you got to do in life. I've completely lost where I was. Oh yeah, here we are. Yeah, so so here yeah, Alcatraz was closed shortly after the true events. See, there was another thing on. My on the podcast I listen to, I like another theory if you like, but I think it's true. Um, yeah, this prison is why it's maximum security. It was supposed to be impossible, impossible to escape it, and they were bigging that up. They said there's no way, no one can escape it, and it was very. And apparently, not just this one and this film, many people tried it, and I think others escaped as well. And a lot of people are saying over time it's the salt water that corroded the building. Like, you know, when the waves go up and it started corroding the, uh, you know, the block work and the, the actual structure, which didn't help. So we move on to um, talking about the theories and ghosts of Alcatraz. And also... I was up a little snippet here, little worth thing. Alchaz was an Indian settlement as well. If you know anything like that. So, according to legend, Alcatraz Prison is known to be one of the most haunted spots in the country, if not in the world. Is it really haunted though? For many people that have visited the prison have experienced supernatural phenomenon. I don't get it. <laughs> Really? Supernatural phenomenon? I'm so bad at reading. My apologies. It certainly seems to be haunted in a mystery way. Staying at Alcatraz was no joke and even the spirits of the most insane and notorious criminals were broken there. It is said that the empty cells inside the walls of Alcatraz still home the restless spirits that remain there. Some of the worst criminals in America, including of, um, Arthur, Doc Barker, Machine Gun Kelly and Al Capone, spent many days behind bars in this prison. See, look, you want to mess with those guys. The prison was built to be a Mexican security place um, where inmates would have minimum privileges. Prisoners breaking the walls would be sent to the strip cell where they would have to remove all their clothing and spend time in a cell with no lights, no sink, no mattress, and only a hole inside the ground for a toilet. That's insane. For this reason, it has said that many spirits aren't able to move on from Alcatraz to make a new home in the spiritual world. Can you imagine living like that, man? That's vile. Oh, that's bad. Right, we'll uh, we'll talk about what is it now. 
because I said it was like a tourist thing. So today Alcatraz is a pu public museum and one of San Francisco's major tourist attractions, attracting some 1.5 million visitors annually. Now operated by the National Park Services Golden Gate National um, Recreation Area. The former prison is being restored and maintained. I would love to go there. Unbelievable. Look, if you guys support me, then I can go there. So it's down to you lot, really, to support me. It's not hard. <laughs> My joking. I appreciate you reading, uh, watching this, listening, whatever you're doing. So, shall we move on to the epic story? Now, this epic story, again, I couldn't find a story that sent to me. Only a few were sent this time. I thought we were going to get some real good ones with Alcatraz. Um, this is not to do with Alcatraz, but it's basically a ghost in a prison. It's only a short one. So this was, this is called, I saw a ghost reflection on, on count. This is by Wolf93. After a decade in the military, I now work as a CO in a medium high security prison in the southeast. As I was conducting count a few days ago, I saw what I believe to be the ghost of a dead prisoner. Our dorms are split up to no up into six sections with the central hub control in the center. After exiting the first section and walking to the second, I could see the reflection of an inmate with blue clothes on the glass of the central hub on my right, as if he was following me. As it was count time and all prisoners are to be in their cells, I started to turn round and ask what he was doing. As I turned, the reflection stopped and seemed to fade away. There was no one behind me. I broke out on goosebumps and looked around. Slightly confused, I took it off and continued my count. I shook it off, sorry, and continued my count. When I finished and went into the central hub to switch with my fellow officers, he was grinning at me and said, You see something? Don't worry. You'll see him from time to time. I finish out my shift without incident. I've only been working there for a few months during that time. Three, four, three to four inmates have died and of course many more have died over the years. I'll post again if I run into anything like this again in the future. Thanks Cozy Sunday. Keep up the good work. Good work. See, not Eltraz, but that's still a bit scary. It's kind of, can you imagine doing that? Can, I'll just picture it now. Like the sound must be, and how quiet must be like a hospital. You know, at night time when no one's there and like even a footsteps are kind of echo. And you just see that right next to you in like the central hub. There's no way. No way. No. Won't do it. Will not do it. Right, so that's it on this one. No more stories. No one wants shout outs. No Patreons. I'm sure you guys will like me one day. <laughs> I hope so. So the next episode is Mr. Bean. And I've got a really good surprise at the beginning of Mr. Beam, only on YouTube, not audio. Same as this one, what I've done today. Um, I think you would love it. It'd be a good one. So send me the old epic stories of Mr. Beam, funny ones, not any scary of Mr. Beam. And I shall see you next time. Ciao, ciao.